In this lesson, we're going to talk about creating tables in BigQuery. There are several ways to create tables. The most common is to create an empty table. So this would be when you define a schema for your table, and you can do this either in the BigQuery console or through the command line. You can also do a direct upload from the BigQuery console. So this will be typically small files. You can use Google Cloud Storage and use large files to create a table. You can also create a table from Google Drive. So again, this would be for smaller files. If you use large files, you want to use Cloud Storage. You can create a table in BigQuery from Google Cloud's Big Table. You can create a table from a query result within BigQuery. And finally, you can create a table using Google Cloud's transfer service. So when you create a table, you can manually create and define a schema, or you can have BigQuery automatically detect the schema. When you create a table, you want to define your destination for your table. So this destination could be your own project, or you can create a table in another project. Also, you can define if you're going to create an empty table, if you're appending to an existing table, or if you're overwriting an existing table. To create a table from a query result, you simply need to run a query, and in the uh, BigQuery UI, um, select the option to save the results of that query as a new table. And again, the options for creating that table are the same as the options listed here. Again, you can write a new table, append to an existing table, or overwrite an existing table. This diagram gives you an overview of the main sources for loading data into BigQuery tables. So you have cloud storage, transfer service, direct upload, Google Drive, and then Bigtable. For batch loading data into BigQuery, uh, you can select a number of file formats. You can choose CSV, Avro, ORC, Parquet, or you can do Google Cloud Firestore exports into cloud storage. All these options let you load either locally or from cloud storage, depending on the file size. You also have the option of using the transfer service. So you can load in data like Google Analytics 360, Google Ads Data, uh, Google Analytics 4, and so forth. There's also the option of streaming data into BigQuery, which we're not going to cover here. But just know that BigQuery does allow you the options of streaming data directly into BigQuery and creating a table off the streaming data. Some considerations when you create a table. If your data is going to grow on a frequent basis, you should consider partitioning your table. This will allow cost-optimized queries as well as better performance in BigQuery. If you're dealing with nested data, such as reading a JSON file or some other nested object, or maybe data from Firestore or Data Store, you want to consider what that schema is going to look like and the performance implications of that nested data in BigQuery. Ask yourself, would creating a view be a better option than creating a table? This is especially pertinent when you are creating a table from a query result. When you run a query, again, you have the option of saving that result as a table or a view. Sometimes a view may be a better option. If there are schema changes in the underlying data that will be loaded into the table you've created, you need to figure out how you're going to address those schema changes. Finally, you need to consider access and permissions. BigQuery does offer the ability to have column and row level access as well as access at the data set level and the project level. There are probably plenty more considerations, but these are the ones that come to mind when you're creating a table in BigQuery. So in future videos, we're going to discuss these considerations as well as go through demos of how to create tables given the various options that we went over in this lesson.